last week I've been um, busy with the editing of this book. So most of you know that we produced a book called Aaron, uh, Aham Sparana, which was the first part of Ramla's teachings from 1936, so about 80 years ago. And now I've almost completed now a new book, which is based on, on Vichara, on, on uh, self-inquiry. So this has been pretty exciting. And what was most exciting was that um, when we started the last book, there was a lot of feelings that this material might not be authentic, that there was no real way of proving that the young man who had written the manuscripts if he was really there with Ramana and so on and so on. So it was very unclear. But suddenly in the last three days, through what I can feel is kind of miracles, it came out very clearly that he did exist. He had a, a close friend in the ashram, a Swami, who actually is buried now in the back of the ashram, so one of the very close devotees who supported um, this project to publish these, um, this very large, about a thousand page manuscript. And he tried, to, he tried to actually do that in 1950, about two months after Bhagwan had left his body. He um, tried to find somebody to publish the book. So what was really touching for me is that if in 1950, it was considered by this small group. There was a small group of very close devotees of Bhagwan, which included people like Mugana, the famous poet. There was a small group who are now actually buried in the back of the ashram. Um, and they must all have agreed with this material. So there's nothing written about it or nothing I could find before about it. But what has come clear in the last day or two is that um, <clears throat> the man who uh, wanted to publish the material, he invited the ex-prime minister of Tamil Nadu, so the number one politician who was a devotee of Bhagwan. He had invited him to write a forward, which I'm going to also put in this book. So in 1950, this kind of important guy wrote a forward to that material. So it's very unlikely that he would have done that if that material wasn't considered to be very authentic. So, um, yeah, out of a sort of chance discovery of an old letter, um, I found this material. So now I'm having no doubt at all that this is completely... Um, authentic, completely authentic. So I spent the last, uh, well actually nearly two weeks working on this material and so I'm very kind of full up, filled up by the beauty of reading this material as you will be when you see this book. I think it's going to be the most important book about Ramana Maharshi actually because the material is so unbelievable. And knowing that it's authentic and knowing that in fact, this young man, who later became a well-known lawyer, that in fact he was exactly the person somehow to, to write this diary. He was very well educated and he was very um, competent, I would say, intelligent guy. And um, we even found him on a picture and we're going to publish this picture of him in, the, in this book. So I had rather an exciting few days now. Okay. Good. So um, I see we have one or two new faces and lots of older faces, younger faces, beautiful faces. So have any of these faces got a question so I can talk? Um, you can come and sit here if you'd like to talk with me from here. Or you can ask a question from where you're sitting.
Would you like to come here? It's a little bit difficult in the beginning, but once you're here, you'll find it's very nice. Sure. You want to give it a go? <laughs> very good, very good. <clears throat> you can just pull this over just in front of you, please. Hello. Good. Perfect. And uh, what's your name? Uh, Robin. I'm a friend of Om from uh, university. Are you? Wow. Yeah. Right. Do you keep in, in contact with him? Do you know that he's been here a few years now? Yeah. <laughs> I knew that. Yeah. Okay. Good. So the question I have is, uh, why do we store tension in the body? For is me, that a good why do we store tension in the body? For me, in the face. Why do we? Why do we? Wh or why do I store tension uh, there? Yeah. And what would be a way to? Uh, Yeah, no, I think I know what to do with it, but I just wonder why it keeps coming back. Well, this isn't very easy for me to answer because I don't know you at all. Mm, yeah. But, um, <clears throat> I mean, without really knowing you, I can just give you a kind of uh, possibilities. So when you were very small, it could have been that some strong things happen, probably with your parents, or uh, if you have brothers or sisters. In, within the family, some th strong moments might have happened. And when those moments happened, you were quite little. And so your body might have done some reaction. And that reaction might be held in the cells of the body. It might be held in the muscles and such like. So that's from many, many years ago. But depending on, on the kind of shock that caused this kind of uh, reaction, it could be that this tension you feel in your face originally came from something like that. That's one possibility. Mm. And um, <clears throat> another possibility is, I don't know you, but maybe you're a person who thinks a lot. So you keep your mind very busy. You can say mm. you're a little bit mental, mm -hmm. men mental, which men mm. tend to be more than women. Women are more in their emotions. Men are more in their mental capacity. So I don't know you, but it could be that you do a lot of thinking about mm. things yeah, and that they so. keep working inside you. They're sort of working inside you. And if, if, if in fact you don't balance that with something else like physical exercises, yoga, maybe meditation. Um, it could be that you know, overthinking is, is, is creating a kind of tension like in the now. Mm. It could be like that. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so then Think naturally, I try to think I mean, that how, maybe how, that's why I catch it, and I think. I mean, how serious is this tension? It's not very serious, and mm -hmm. when I come here for the weekend and we're like present a lot, I can feel it get less. And uh, but it just sitting there, this question came up like. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Like, uh, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what, what we are trying to achieve in this community, <clears throat> probably Om has talked to you about it, we're trying to achieve the possibility of living from moment to moment in presence. Mm. And, and if we're successful with that, <clears throat> then I would say we're probably not very tense. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, maybe our, our nature as, as a human being is not, particularly to be tense. In fact, I would say our nature is probably to be very relaxed, mm. you know, in our natural state. But we are very far away from a natural state because mm. a natural state would mean we have a lot of contact with nature, we would have no pressure of time, and we would be um, 
spending our time with something that really is delicious, makes us very happy, very relaxed, very, mm. you know. And unfortunately, in the modern society, it's very common that we're doing a job for many hours every week or every month, which maybe doesn't particularly pleasure, pleasure us. We're doing it for some reasons, whatever they are. One of them is almost certainly to, it's better paid than another job which we might have liked more, but we wanted to get the money. We tend to be rather fixated on, on money, getting money. <clears throat> so taking part in the normal society lifestyle doesn't naturally bring us to relax. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would say it tends to bring us into a lot of tension. Mm. And then, of course, in the society, we try to relax that by drinking alcohol or smoking cigarettes. Cigarettes are pretty much out now because of the health concerns, but still people drink a lot. And this is somehow to relax them, I think, mm. or to sit in front of the television to relax themselves. So I would say that in the, in the typical modern society in pretty much every country, the stress levels are actually very high, and so we're not living in a very natural way. Many years ago, I lived in Tokyo, for a few years even, and this is an enormously stressful city because there's an enormous pressure there about time. And there's a lot of people living in a very big city, but when you actually start traveling in the city, you, you meet a lot of the other people living in the city. So it's very crowded. There's always a time pressure. There's a very strong um, <clears throat> sense in the society of how you should behave and so on. So I would say Tokyo is probably one of the most stressful places that I've ever been to. Mm. And I lived there for three years. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure at that time I was pretty stressed. In fact, I remember now I was very stressed. Like I remember in the evening, I, in the day I had a job at an architect's office. And then around five or six, I left the office and got on a train. And at the end of the train ride, I was going to teach English in a company. Mm. And I would get on the platform at one end of the train and get on the train. And in the course of the journey, I would walk through the train to the other end of the train because when, I, when the train arrived at my station, I had to get out at the other end of the train because the exit was at the other end of the train. So rather than just sit on the train and relax between my office job and my evening job, I was in fact you know, pushing my way through a crowded train. So mm -hmm. this is sort of an fast. example of the pressures of society and time and all that. You know? mm. So I don't know nice. what kind of lifestyle you have. Do you have anything like that? Well, I try to keep a balance between being mindful and yeah, like a typical city work life, I think. Yeah. Um, and I would say, generally, I would say... Um, you live I could in do, Amsterdam, do you? I live in Amsterdam, yeah. I would say I, I could do... <coughs> I could be more mindful, but I'm also quite... centered in the heart often enough to think like I'm doing good. But... Yeah. Um, I mean, when you're now when living I, in Amsterdam, I mean... You know, I was saying how Tokyo for me is one of the most stressful cities. I would say, in contrast, Amsterdam for me, when I visit there as a tourist, always feels like a very relaxed city because there's a tremendous amount of water. Mm. Um, except for being on a bicycle, it all feels very relaxed in Amsterdam. The cars can't go very fast. The streets are pretty narrow. Mm. And... Um, as I remember, it's only really the bicycles which create stress because they somehow decided that they have the right of way. So even if you're walking through Amsterdam at any moment, mm -hmm. you can meet a fast-moving bicycle. Yeah, no, it's not so much the city. Huh? It's not so much the city, but uh, maybe more just the digital office lifestyle, which is very common to city life. Right, right, yeah. But thank you. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I have another question. 
<laughs> thank you for the time. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so that was pretty relaxed, no tension in that. So somebody else can come now. Come on. <laughs> Best, best advice is you start moving towards this chair before he's gone back in his chair. That way it's very easy to move. But if you wait for him to sit down, the chair's now empty, of course that's a lot more kind of stress. You know, to, shall it be me that goes on the chair? I'm going to have to ask somebody to come and sit here, and I would probably ask you, because you've been coming here for quite a few months. I always feel like you're a very nice guy, but I've never really met you. Shall we have a meeting? Does he understand English? You don't understand English. Do you, do you understand my English? or? Oh, okay, right, right. Okay, so we'll need a translation. So maybe with translation, can we have a meeting? I don't want to put you into stress, of course. Mm -hmm. What? You can use this one. Ah, so you don't actually understand my English, so that's one reason we don't easily meet. Yes. Right. <laughs> See, uh, now it's taken me a few months to discover that. Okay. My English is not so good. Okay. But Okay, but we have a very excellent translator, so we, yes. I think it's not really important. Because, I mean, I see that you are very much engaging yourself here in the community, and I see that you offer very much uh, help. You, you, want, you see what needs doing, like the tap is leaking or something, and then you offer yourself to fix it. This is very nice actually because it means you've got an open heart and you have you, you have can I say you have the intention to contribute. Also das ist sehr schön. Das bedeutet ja, dass du ein offenes Herz hast und äh, dass du gerne dazu zu irgendetwas beitragen willst. Yes. And somehow we've created a society where everybody is trying to get something. Weil wir haben eine Gesellschaft kreiert, wo jeder eigentlich etwas bekommen möchte. And I mean, when I meet people or I see people around, it's usually quite few who are offering something. They want to give something. Und wenn ich Leuten begegne, da kann ich sehen, da gibt es nur sehr wenige, die bereit sind zu geben. But I see you're one of those people where you want to give something. Aber ich sehe, yes. du bist jemand, der gerne geben möchte. Yes. So this is, for, for me, this is very important and very wonderful because without an open heart, it's impossible to really achieve much in the spiritual world. Also für mich ist das sehr wichtig, weil ohne ein offenes Herz ist es sehr schwierig, irgendetwas in der spirituellen Welt zu erreichen. Yes. I mean, you've now been involved for many years. You had another teacher, I think. Du bist ja jetzt schon seit vielen Jahren dabei. Du hattest ja einen anderen Lehrer vorher. Yeah. Yeah. And then he left his body, and then you had a gap where maybe you didn't have, you weren't so busy with spiritual work. I don't know really. Und dann ist er ja gestorben, und dann hattest du, glaube ich, so eine Pause, wo du wahrscheinlich nicht so viel involviert warst. Ten years. In spirituelle Arbeit. Yeah. Ten years. Right. Yeah. I'm involving from from myself. You can speak um, in German and she'll translate yeah, for me. Ich, ich war natürlich weiter weiter involviert, aber mit mir selbst. So so I carried on being involved but with myself, not right. with the teacher. Yeah. Right. 
And what is your experience coming here? You've been coming for maybe three or four months already. Was ist deine Erfahrung hier? Jetzt du bist ja seit drei vier Monaten kommst du ja regelmäßig. Meine Erfahrung ist, dass ich freier werde. My experience is that I become more free. Ja. Yes. Das hat begonnen, dass ich mich vor zwei Jahren Osho zugewandt habe, also Osho kennengelernt habe überhaupt erstmal. It started okay. when two years ago I met Osho. Okay. Und Osho hat einige Puzzlestücke. Ich meine, die haben mir gefehlt in meinem Bild reingesetzt. And through Osho, I got some pieces of the jigsaw which uh, was missing in my picture. Oh, like yeah. what? Yes. Was denn zum Beispiel? Frei, Freiheit. Dass die, dass, ähm, Freiheit sehr wichtig ist. Und That freedom is very important. Right. And I'm God. Dass wir Gott in uns haben. And that I'm God, that we have God inside. Right. We're not separate from God. Wir sind nicht getrennt von Wir God. sind nicht getrennt. Yes. Right. Right. Das war ein wichtiger Punkt. I think Osho would have been mm. very good for you if you could have met him when he was alive. He would have been good for you. Ich glaube, wenn du Osho hättest begegnen können, als er noch am Leben war, ich glaube, der wäre sehr gut für dich gewesen. You know, in my, in my case, when I was 30, I had met a Japanese woman, and this Japanese woman and myself, we came to visit Osho when I was about 30 years old. Als ich ungefähr 30 war, da hatte ich ja eine japanische Freundin, und wir haben dann zusammen sind wir zu Osho gegangen, wo sind wir ihm begegnet. And for the next 15 years I saw him as my master and I spent a lot of time with him. Und die nächsten 15 Jahre war er mein Meister und ich habe sehr viel Zeit mit ihm verbracht. So I did many years of meditation in the ashram. Ich habe viele Jahre Meditation gemacht in dem Ashram. And also I worked in different parts of the ashram. Und ich habe in unterschiedlichen Bereichen im Ashram gearbeitet. And of course I lived I don't know really how long I lived, but maybe it was about eight years coming and going. I lived uh, near his ashram. Und acht Jahre habe ich in der Nähe seines Ashrams gelebt. Also ich bin immer hin und her. And uh, after he left his body, I spent another year in his ashram. Und nachdem er seinen Körper verlassen hatte, habe ich noch ein Jahr, ein weiteres Jahr in seinem Ashram verbracht. I, I wasn't feeling that I particularly needed a new teacher. Ich hatte nicht wirklich das Gefühl, dass ich einen neuen Lehrer brauchte. But I was aware that I wasn't completely cooked. Aber es war mir bewusst, dass ich noch nicht ganz fertig war. And I got a lot of benefit from those 15 years. Ich hatte aus diesen 15 Jahren sehr viel Nutzen gezogen. And um, so during that year, people, some of them were friends of mine, had gone to visit another teacher. Und in diesem Jahr waren einige Leute, einige waren Freunde von mir zu einem anderen Lehrer gegangen. And I noticed when they came back from spending time with this teacher, their energy felt very open. Und mir fiel auf, dass uh, die, die von diesem Lehrer zurückkamen, die hatten eine sehr offene Energie. And finally, one of my closer friends came back from visiting this master. Und einer meiner engeren Freunde, der kam von diesem Meister zurück. And he, he started to explain something which I couldn't understand. Und er fing mir an, etwas zu erklären, was ich nicht verstehen konnte. So this was the kind of central part of Ramana Maharshi's teaching. Der, der zentrale Teil von Ramana Maharshi's Lehren. Because Osho used to talk a lot about enlightenment. Osho, der sprach immer sehr viel über Erleuchtung. He used to talk about it in the sense that, well, that what, what, what I took from what he said. Also er sprach da so in dem Sinne drüber oder sagen wir mal, was ich davon verstanden habe damals, was that um, he was telling me that there was something I could achieve if I did certain things like meditate, for example. 
Also dass es da etwas gibt, was ich erreichen kann und was ich dadurch bekommen kann, indem ich zum Beispiel gewisse Dinge tue, wie Meditation. And he made me feel that this thing called enlightenment would be the best thing I could possibly get in my life. Und er gab mir so das Gefühl, dass dieses Ding, was man Erleuchtung nannte, so das Beste ist, was ich in meinem Leben erreichen kann. It felt like a sort of spiritual gold medal. Das fühlte sich so an wie eine spirituelle Goldmedaille. And so being a sort of middle class English guy, you know, I was kind of quite into the idea of getting gold medals. Und ich war ja so ein bürgerlicher, englischer, junger Mann und da gefiel mir diese Vorstellung von einer Goldmedaille, die man bekommen könnte, sehr gut. And uh, what, what I discovered talking to people who'd been with this other teacher, who later I knew as Papaji. Aber was ich dann entdeckt habe von den Leuten, die mit diesem anderen Lehrer waren, den ich später dann als Papaji kennengelernt habe. And Papaji was a direct disciple of Ramana Maharshi. Papaji war ein direkter Schüler von Ramana Maharshi. And what he told me was that um, I'm already enlightened. Und der lehrte mich, dass ich schon erleuchtet bin. That I, there's nothing I can get. Dass es nichts gibt, was ich bekommen kann. I'm already complete. Ich bin schon komplett. And I was already complete. As soon as I appeared on this planet, I was already complete. Und ich war schon komplett, als ich hier auf dieser Erde angekommen bin. And not only myself, but everybody else. Und nicht nur ich selbst, sondern alle anderen auch. So this idea of enlightenment, that you get it if you do certain things, uh, make some big efforts, maybe spend your whole life, you can maybe get this thing called enlightenment. Also diese Vorstellung, diese Erleuchtung zu bekommen, wenn man sich sein ganzes Leben nur genug anstrengt, dass man das dann bekommen kann. And suddenly this other teacher is putting me in touch with a completely different idea that in fact inside myself, my being, if you like, was God. Und plötzlich bringt mich dieser Lehrer in Kontakt mit einer ganz anderen Vorstellung, dass in mir mein Wesen selbst schon Gott ist. And the problem was only that there were many issues going on in my mind that acted as a kind of screen that prevented me being in contact with this um, wonderful beingness. Und dass das Problem ist, dass ähm, im Grunde diese ganzen Sachen, die in mir sind, so als Schleier ähm, sind, die mich von diesem wahren Wesen in mir abhalten. So I discovered that I don't need to get something. Und da habe ich entdeckt, dass ich gar nichts bekommen brauche. Actually, the spiritual work is getting rid of stuff. Also bei der spirituellen Arbeit geht es eigentlich darum, Dinge loszuwerden. And I was mentioning uh, the possibility when we're young, we can get some kind of uh, strong moments, emotional moments or physical moments also with adults, which can cause something in our body for the rest of our life. Also ich habe eben darüber geredet, dass wenn wir klein sind, dass es da so intensive Augenblicke geben kann mit den Erwachsenen, die also irgendwelche Spannungen in unserem Körper verursachen können für den Rest unseres Lebens. And so if you if you don't start to be aware about what might be going on inside you, it's going to completely block any possibility of reaching your essential nature. Und wenn man nicht irgendwann anfängt, sich bewusst darüber zu werden, was so in einem vorgeht, dann blockiert man ganz die Möglichkeit, zu dieser wahren Natur einfach zurückzukommen. So this was very exciting to discover this new idea. Das war sehr aufregend für mich, diese neue Vorstellung zu entdecken. And then when I decided, actually I decided that I would leave Osho, he'd been my teacher for 15 years, now I would say goodbye to him. Und dann beschloss ich, mich von Osho zu verabschieden. Er war 15 Jahre mein Lehrer gewesen. And I went to spend time with Papaji. Und habe Zeit mit Papaji verbracht. And I ended up spending nearly five years, four and a half years. Und letztendlich habe ich dann fünf Jahre mit ihm verbracht. So I was a very slow boy, because I basically spent 20 years doing spiritual practices. Also ich war ziemlich langsam. Ich habe 20 Jahre damit verbracht, spirituelle Praxen zu machen. And most of you guys, you want to go to two meetings, read three books, and that's enough. Die meisten von euch, die wollen zu drei Meetings gehen, zwei Bücher lesen und hoffen dann, dass es genug ist. Of course, I probably a bit slow, but anyway. Ich war vielleicht ein bisschen langsam, aber dennoch. But it was very interesting being in the community around Papaji. Aber es war sehr interessant, in der Gemeinschaft um Papaji drumherum zu sein. 
because it turned out that he was already about 80 years old when I met him. Er war damals schon so ungefähr 80, als ich ihm begegnete. And he somehow attracted to his meetings people who had been spending already many years with other teachers. Und irgendwie hat er Leute angezogen, die schon sehr viele Jahre mit anderen Lehrern gewesen waren. It became a kind of finishing school, spiritual finishing school. Das war so wie eine spirituelle Abschlussschule. Something like that. And I'm looking back, I can say how happy I am that I, you know, ended up getting there. Und wenn ich zurückblicke, kann ich sagen, wie glücklich ich bin, dass ich da, ja, da, da hingekommen bin. And then through Papaji I became acquainted with Ramla Maharshi. Und durch Papaji habe ich dann Ramana Maharshi näher kennengelernt. And now I find, you know, many years later I find myself working on this material from Ramana Maharshi. Und viele Jahre später jetzt, äh, ja, finde ich mich wieder, wie ich an diesem Material von Ramana Maharshi arbeite. So I don't know how all that has really worked out, but out of my spiritual life, you can say, gradually I've been um, advancing towards some kind of gold medal. Also ich weiß nicht, wie das alles so geschehen ist, aber irgendwie im Laufe meines spirituellen Lebens habe ich mich irgendwie so zu einer Goldmedaille vorgearbeitet. Realizing that actually there is no gold medal. Und erkannt, dass es gar keine Goldmedaille gibt. And that in fact it's very simple. Und dass es eigentlich sehr einfach ist. You see, and I think you understand that. Und ich glaube, du verstehst das. Is that right? I think so. Yeah, that I think so. So I really wanted to meet you, you see. Ja, ich wollte dich wirklich mal treffen. Thank you. Um, mein, mein erster Lehrer, er hat mich die, die Gottesliebe gelehrt. Das ist mein erster Teacher, er taught me the love to God. Das war seine, seine, sein großes Geschenk für mich. This was his big present for me. Right. Aber als ich Osho begegnet bin und dann begegnet bin und dann ähm, Ramana Maharshi, ähm, ist mir klar geworden, dass es dieses Problem mit der Person in uns gibt. But when I met Osho and then Ramana Maharshi, I realized that there is this problem with this person in us. In, with what? That there is a problem with this person in us, the person in us. Right, right. Yeah. Und diese Erkenntnis war für mich die sehr befreiend, weil jetzt konnte ich weiterlaufen, also weitergehen. And this realization was for me very uh, freeing, freeing, because then I could uh, carry on walking. Yeah, I mean, our, each human being has a character or personality. You can call it like personality or character. Mm -hmm. so, also jeder Mensch hat so eine Persönlichkeit oder Charakter. So this is a kind of overlay on top of our being or our godliness. Also das ist wie so ein Mantel, der so über diesem Wesen oder dem uh, unserer Göttlichkeit ist. And um, if this character is too caught up in stuff, then it doesn't work basically. So so when you come to understand something about your character, you probably need to make some decisions to change your character. Also und wenn dieser Charakter sich zu sehr verwickelt, dann funktioniert es einfach nicht. Und äh, wenn du dir des, dessen Charakter gewahr wirst, dann ist es Zeit, was daran zu verändern. I mean, I would say that words like humble, compassionate, heart open, quiet, uh, sensitive that those kind of words would um, how can i say would support a spiritual journey also ich würde sagen dass worte wie bescheiden mitfühlend still herzlich also die spirituellen weg wirklich fördern and insensitivity um, arrogance um, too much thinking um, too much stress, those kind of attributes of a character would not really help you, wouldn't support a spiritual journey. 
Ja, und dass so Dinge wie Arroganz oder Unsensibilität, äh, zu viel Denken, zu viel Stress, einen spirituellen Weg nicht unterstützen. I mean, now you probably know most of the people living in the community. Du kennst jetzt wahrscheinlich die meisten Leute, die hier leben. But, you know, there is a kind of typical character that lives in this community. Also hier gibt es so einen typischen Charakter, der in dieser Gemeinschaft lebt. And basically, what I was saying before about sensitivity and humbleness, compassion, uh, heart opening, these kind of things. Also was ich vorher eben gesagt hat, ne? Sensibilität, äh, Bescheidenheit, Mitgefühl, Herz offen, diese Dinge. Has encouraged the people you find living in this community to come and live here. Haben die Leute ja im Grunde dazu gebracht hier zu leben, hier leben zu wollen. So there may be something completely natural about that. Da ist vielleicht etwas ganz natürlich dran. But equally, most um, spiritual seekers, Aber die meisten spirituellen Sucher, I never really hear them talking about the character is also important. Also ich höre nie darüber sprechen, dass der Charakter auch wichtig ist. For example, I have a great respect for the people that have chosen to live here in this community. Ich habe einen großen Respekt vor den Leuten, die sich dazu entschieden haben, hier in der Gemeinschaft leben zu wollen. I mean, we have people from 10 years, 12 years, 15 years even living here. Wir haben Leute hier, die 10, 12, 15 Jahre hier leben. And so they've gone through a process where they've basically decided to give up on on the society. Sie sind durch einen Prozess gegangen, wo sie sich entschlossen haben, die Gesellschaft aufzugeben. They don't want to be rich. They don't want to be famous. They don't want to be the prime minister. Die wollen nicht reich sein, nicht berühmt sein, keine Premierminister werden. They want to be peaceful and they want to experience love and they want to experience that in presence in every moment. Die wollen friedvoll sein, Liebe erfahren und das in Präsenz in jedem Augenblick. So this is a very different choice that most people make. Das ist eine sehr andere Wahl, die sie treffen wie von den meisten Menschen. We've been, this community has been functioning for 20 years, 21 years, I think. Die Gemeinschaft gibt es jetzt schon seit 20 Jahren. And we've never been more than 20 people. Und wir waren nie mehr als 20 Menschen. I, I had no idea in the beginning how many people would choose to come and live here. Also am Anfang hatte ich überhaupt keine Vorstellung davon, wie viele Leute wohl hier leben wollen würden. So in in this house we have extra rooms which we rent out to tourists or business people. Also in diesem Haus haben wir ja extra Zimmer, die wir vermieten an Touristen oder Geschäftsleute. And I always had the idea that maybe if 30 people want to live here, we just have a smaller guest house. And we use those rooms for the residents. Und ich habe immer gedacht, ja, wenn hier mehr Leute leben wollen, zum Beispiel 30, dann ähm, haben wir einfach weniger Gästezimmer und wir bewohnen die Zimmer. So over the life of this community, it's always been possible for there to be more than 20 people here. Also es wäre möglich gewesen, dass mehr als 20 Leute hier hätten wohnen können. But the reality is that people are so incredibly locked in to the norms of society. Aber die Realität ist, dass die Leute so unglaublich eingefangen sind von den Regeln der Gesellschaft oder so, den Normen der Gesellschaft. So most people, they don't even have the possibility to consider living in this kind of community. Die meisten Menschen haben noch nicht mal die Möglichkeit, irgendwie so das in Erwägung zu ziehen, dass man in so einer Gemeinschaft leben kann. You see, and, and we don't realize how deeply affecting us these kind of conditioning from society can be. Und wir haben keine Vorstellung, wie stark uns diese Konditionierung der Gesellschaft, was für eine Wirkung die auf uns haben. We have a, we have, a, is he, it's Dietmar, is it? What is his name? Love. Love. No, this Dominic? What's Dominic? his name? Dominic. Dominic. So Dominic is watching us tonight. He's a bit sick. He's watching us from home. Yeah. Dominic schaut hier von zu Hause zu. Er ist ein bisschen krank. 
So as he's not here, I can have a go at him now. Jetzt wo er nicht hier ist, kann ich ja mal ein bisschen. Uh, he's a, a little bit serious kind of guy. Er ist so ein bisschen ernster Typ. Very intelligent, hardworking. Intel intelligent, hart arbeitend. And um, I don't know, three months ago, he came to one of the retreats, and he had a big spiritual thing happen. Und vor drei Monaten kam er zu einem Retreat, und da ist eine spirituelle Öffnung geschehen. And From that time, his basic life has started to change, because he, although he's kind of ambitious and he likes to have lots of money and he likes to have a good job, and he flies backwards and forwards to Switzerland every week, so he's used to this sort of society lifestyle, which he kind of likes. Also, ja, und von da an hat sich sein Leben verändert. Also er hat ja so einen Lebensstil, der ihm gefällt, wo er immer in die Schweiz fliegt und zurückfliegt. But when he actually comes to the Open Sky House, he does also like it here. Aber wenn er zum Open Sky House kommt, gefällt es ihm auch hier. So now I'm having a go at him because he's got a moment in his life now, right now. Jetzt im Augenblick hat er so einen besonderen Augenblick in seinem Leben. And it's not by accident he looks like death warmed up. Und es ist nicht <lacht> zufällig, dass er so aussieht. He needs, to, he needs to look like that at the moment. Das er ziemlich mitgenommen aussieht. A couple of weeks ago he had asked to, to meet me. Vor einigen äh, Wochen hat er gebeten, das, äh, mich zu treffen. I thought we were going to have a sort of friendly lunch together. Ich habe gedacht, wir hätten so ein freundliches Mittagessen zusammen. But then it turned out that he and his girlfriend have separated in the last time. Aber dann stellte sich raus, dass er und seine Freundin sich kürzlich getrennt haben. His girlfriend has a couple of kids. Seine Freundin hat ein paar Kinder. And I think they've been together for quite a few years, so he's probably feel also like the he also feels like the daddy of these kids, I guess. Und die sind ja schon einige Jahre zusammen gewesen, das heißt, er fühlt sich auch so ein bisschen wie der Vater der Kinder. So this is of course a very strong moment. What? I can do it directly now when you talk to him then you can Okay. No, I'm not really planning to talk to him. I'm just provoking him. <laughs> he can't. He can't. He can't easily get away now. <laughs> so today I, I can just hit the button here. <laughs> <laughs> but he won't stop me talking. <laughs> so in this moment, you know, it, it, when I heard this thing about his relationship breaking, I was rather surprised. And then I thought, well, it seems to me that destiny could be working here. And I said to Indira, you know, maybe he's going to be interested to come and live with us. <laughs> After all, he's the kind of guy who had a yacht in the Caribbean and lived on his yacht. And now he's the kind of guy that f flies between his wife and his job in Switzerland every week. A bit more economic. Turn him off, turn him off, turn him off. We don't want you. You don't have to say anything. We cut you off. We cut you off. You don't want to hear. So, so basically, he's got this situation, right? He's, he's probably already amassed a fair amount of money. So he's, he's dealt with that one and so on. So what is, what is his next step? What is Destiny telling him, do you think? And to me, it's completely, completely obvious because we, we all like him very much. He's a nice human being, and he has skills which would be lovely to have in the community, and we would be able to put out into the planet Earth a bit more books and a bit more good stuff if we had him helping us doing it. You see? So from, from my point of view, it, destiny seems to be working quite, uh, uh, how can you say, quite intelligently, and we'll see what effect that has on this man, you see? Because probably he didn't really expect all this. You know, he probably thought he'd go to a few meetings, maybe come to a retreat or two, and he would have a nice experience. Uh, meet a few nice people, and he would just carry on with his life. 
because this is the level of most people who are sitting here, actually. We don't really plan to make any big changes in our life. We are a little bit used to being a mouse running around on the wheel, you know. Anyway, so I, I, you gave me a chance to provoke him a bit. He doesn't look any worse than he did before, so I think it's all right. <laughs> and if you want to have lunch next week, I can be available any day. <laughs> Sorry to provoke you, but I, I had to take the chance. I had to take the chance. What do you, would you like to offer him uh, your um, wisdom? Möchtest du ihm so deine Weisheit anbieten? Lass das Schicksal weiter Regie führen. So let the destiny carry on to be the director. All right. I mean, I most, choice anyway. most most I people get ve most people get very upset when their relationship doesn't work out. Also, die meisten Leute, die die nimmt das ziemlich mit, wenn die Beziehung nicht funktioniert. And of course, in my lifetime, I've had many experiences of relationships not working out. Und in meinem Leben hatte ich auch viele Erfahrungen, dass Beziehungen nicht so funktioniert haben. But now I see these are the wonderful moments, you know, it, the, the great moment when something so important as an intimate relationship breaks down. This is a very important moment, actually. Aber jetzt kann ich sehen, dass das ganz wichtige Augenblicke sind, so Augenblicke, wo so intime Beziehungen auseinanderbrechen. And so I think I can say without any question, this is a very lovely moment for you. Also ich kann ohne Frage sagen, dass das ein wunderbarer Augenblick zurzeit für dich ist. And you can be sick for a week or two maybe and go deep into this situation. Und du kannst ein, zwei Wochen krank sein und da tief in die Situation hineingehen. Yeah. Beautiful, wonderful. Wunderbar. I actually wanted to talk to you anyway, but maybe um, you can finish uh, with life first. Oh, you want to, well, I, I'm, you, I'm combining you both now. Also, ich kombiniere okay, euch beide. Yeah, for me, that's fine. Um, so, actually, what happened, um, I mean, some of what you said, uh, I can relate to, but some of it, I don't know, it's, a lot happened in a very short time. So, from uh, me realizing that this relationship uh, is, is basically over um, and then there was a lot of pain and, and um, a feeling of loss, right? I lost something. I was very sad. Um, and, and then there were a lot of thoughts also and emotions and it was all like a big chaos. Um, and then I had another moment when I went to the bathroom, on the way to the bathroom, I mean, there was so much, I, or I, I, I still, I love this woman, and now she's gone, so there's this pain, and then suddenly, I had this realization that this woman is, is, is part, is like everything, and it's the same as me, and like there was the, like a big oneness experience, And then somehow, all my love I had for this woman turned into love for everything. So now I'm very happy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and all this pain and suffering is actually gone. And I can see that this relationship was actually just a bunch of a lot of crazy ideas and conditionings. Right? And we We talked on the phone, we actually met today by chance in the middle of Germany because we were traveling in different directions and we met by chance and had a coffee. Wow. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you should and, and, definitely and, stay friends. The way I experience this now, it's like completely different. It's quite amazing. Right. So it's no pain. You know? But you can see destiny has got you very nicely. Yes. 
you know, to have a coffee in the middle of Germany by chance mm -hmm. is probably, you know, two trains passing in the station or something. So, yes. Mm. What can you say? I mean, that's not. Yeah. Right. Well, I think what you what you can say to yourself is that it could add to your trust <clears throat> that all these spiritual blah blahs are not just blah blahs that they actually do function, you know? I mean, I can't actually think right now, but I, in, in my life I have so many, um, well, I, can, I, I was saying at the beginning of this meeting that I discovered in the last three days that this man who wrote the manuscript, right, that his manuscript had been sent to the ashram in 1950 and there were people there who were actually the closest disciples of Bhagwan who had decided to publish this material. They didn't have the money to publish it. They didn't have, the, the, I mean, the ashram had gone empty for about 20 years after Bhagwan passed. The people that used to come and visit him, they, they didn't want to come because it reminded them of, you know, things that they didn't want to get reminded of. So the ashram was very empty except for a small group of uh, close devotees. Um, and um, as far as I can feel, they must have together read that material and decided together that this is great material and we should try to publish it. They couldn't publish it as an ashram because they, they had no finance. But um, it's clear to me in the last few days that the president of the ashram had told me they have no contact with this man, they don't know who he was, so there's no way they could publish this material now, 80 years later. Yeah. But in the last few days, by reading an old letter that somebody in his family had sent, or actually a couple of letters, I suddenly saw the um, situation was proven. It's like just suddenly it was proven that all this material, as I've been feeling now for three, four years, is wonderful material, right? And I've got, if you like, now the, the evidence to support that. Even a photograph of this man has showed up. So when I see things like that happening, it gives me a greater trust in my being, my intuition, in, in God's grace, uh, whatever you, however you want to put words on it. But we can get a little bit more trust. This whole show is really working in a miraculous way. So having a coffee in the middle of Germany somewhere is one more little uh, something to support you completely trusting that. I'm not saying you don't trust, but I'm saying it'll be a bit more trust. Anyway, um, would you like to, um, do you have some things to say or is that enough for now? Well, that was like the big news <laughs> for me. So, yeah. I hope, I mean, you can hear it maybe a bit, so I'm still fixing, but maybe, um, yeah, maybe next week we can find some time. Sure. It'd be nice. We really appreciate it. Well, I definitely can find time now because we've got something exciting to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. No, I'm, I'm happy. Okay. Good. Very nice that you're on the on the. Uh, we've got a giant television. Where is this giant? Te is it a television or a computer screen? <laughs> it's a television. Wow! I never seen such a big one. Wow. Okay. So, so you really provided a very nice opportunity. You see, because as I've been looking at you, I saw that he was on the screen. And I knew that what I was talking to you about was actually what I also wanted to talk to him about. <laughs> it, 
Mm. I translated already. Okay, he, and he heard it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So I mean, I, I I like to see how you have an open heart and how you're ready to contribute. Also, ich finde es schön zu sehen, dass du ein offenes Herz hast und wie du bereit bist, dich einzubringen. Letztes Mal saß ich dort und ich hatte so eine Angst, dass er mich vorholt. Und ich habe mich extra hinten versteckt. The last time in the audience, I was hiding in the back and I was scared that you would ask me to come to the front. Right, right. That's why I have to ask you. you see. Und in dieser Woche, ich habe mit Andrea gesprochen, das geht so nicht weiter. Ich kann nicht mit Angst hierher kommen. So, but this time I talked before to uh, Lavanya and said, this has to stop. I can't come here with fear. Right. Und ich habe mit mir klar gemacht, um, ich habe das geändert in mir und habe gesagt, ich werde mich freuen, wenn er mich vorruft und ich werde sprechen und ich mache mir, ich mache mir keine Gedanken, ich bin frei. Und And I said to myself, so now I'm going to change it. I will be happy when he's calling me and uh, I will stop thinking about this. Okay. Well, of course, there would have been one better step you could have done. There wäre natürlich noch einen besseren Schritt, den du hättest tun können. Because you could have chosen to come without my invitation, I think. Du hättest auch wählen können, ohne meine Einladung nach vorne zu kommen. Anyway, we won't, we won't mind that. We won't mind that. But uh, die Situation ist, ich bin sehr äh, glücklich jetzt hier zu sein und mein Puls ist ruhig. The situation is I'm very happy to sit here and my pulse is really calm. Right, right. It's actually great sitting here because if you, if I like now, I'm starting to, I'm just looking out on the audience here. And what, what I get doing these kind of meetings is, is two hours of love, you know? It's like suddenly you're having a whole bunch of lovers and they're all loving me and I don't have to do anything. There won't be any breakup at the end of the meeting. It'll all be easy and um, fine, you know? Also so sitting here, here is very, very nice. Here is großartig here to sit, it's really sehr schön, because it's so as if man ganz viele Liebhaber hat, as if ganz viel Liebe auf einen kommt und es gibt keine. Trennung am Ende, ich muss nichts tun. Vorgestern habe ich äh, auf YouTube <coughs> Papachi äh, und Satzang, also Dokumentation mit äh, mehreren Satzangs gesehen und wow. Papachi, wow. So yesterday I saw on YouTube mm. a documentary about Papachi and the several film. Satzangs from him. Was it Call of the Search? The film mm. called Call of the Search? Yes. Is the film Call of the Search? Hör auf mit der Suche. Nee. Nein. Nee, es war eine Dokumentation. Ich glaube, sie war geführt von, ähm, ähm, wie heißt der, der englische? David Goodman. David, David Goodman, yes. It was a documentary from David Goodman. Okay. Mm. And I say, Papachi, I, I see Papachi, I say, wow. Sie, er spricht so, ähm, so klar und so kompensiert, also wirklich mit wenigen Worten. Mit dem, das hat mir sehr gut gefallen. He speaks very clear and very dense, yeah? With very little words mm -hmm. he says things. I don't remember anything he said. You know, I was listening for five years, but now I forgot. Ich erinnere mich ja nichts mehr, was er gesagt hat. Ich habe fünf Jahre zugehört, aber jetzt habe ich alles vergessen. And if I would now start talking about him, he, his energy would come here. So I think I won't talk so much about him now. Also wenn ich jetzt über ihn reden würde, dann würde seine Energie hier in den Raum treten. Ich glaube, ich rede lieber nicht so viel über ihn jetzt. Good. Well, we were successful, weren't we? Because now you must be impressed that I could feel that I have to invite you today. Also jetzt, wir waren doch ziemlich erfolgreich, weil jetzt müsstest du ja ziemlich beeindruckt sein, dass ich irgendwie gespürt habe, dass du Because heute eingeladen I can't you sitting always at the back hiding. Ich kann dich ja nicht immer hinten im Versteck lassen. Okay. Thank you. Okay. For the talk. Thank you for the talk. <lacht> Thank you. Go on then, go for it. Ja, yeah, hello. Hello. 
Nice to see you again. Have a look around at the, the audience. <laughs> make, make some eye contact with the audience. <laughs> Choose one or two people just to kind of say hello to. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. Because right now I think you're feeling a bit of tension, yeah? Um, without realizing it. <laughs> right. So I'm suggesting maybe you try try Lakshmi. She's smiling very nicely. Just look at Lakshmi and make eye contact with her <laughs> and see what then happens for you. Because probably um, you're going to feel very relaxed in a minute or two because she's looking very uh, lovely and open and so on. So how are you feeling now? Does something change? Much more in connection with my body. Right. Because I think I was just figuring out the last 15 minutes what to ask. Yeah. <laughs> so very much. <laughs> you don't, don't you, well, it's, it's okay if you do that, but you're going to find that the conversation will go some other direction probably. Because mm. I'm going to say something to you now, like in a few days you're going to Spain. <laughs> Yeah. Is that okay for you? I really want to. Yeah? Yeah. It's very beautiful there at the moment. It's very beautiful. And in uh, about two weeks' time, you'll still be there. We're coming, four or five people, we're coming to have a big celebration to open that um, community place, you know, to open that house. We call it Open Sky Oasis. <laughs> So the idea is to create a kind of international community there. Some people from here and maybe some new people, maybe some Spanish people even. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm very interesting how this like develops because I mean, at the moment it feels like our center of the community is here. Yeah. But I also experienced like, um, when I'm um, getting in a new room as a metaphor, um, then it, for me it takes some time to feel the energy in this and um, like see it like that. It's, it's, it's when when I first get into this room, then I sometimes have the feeling, oh, it's it's like empty. There is no energy in it. But by the time passing, I see, oh, it's it has this whole capacity because I mean it's like everything and um, yeah I'm interesting to see how my perspective of Spain and the oasis there will change when I'm there and now experiencing it with other yeah, with other um, eyes and yeah mm -hmm. yeah we, we've just upgraded a lot of furniture so the house has changed since you were last there and we've also been buying a lot of plants for the garden so everything is a little bit different than when you were there. You were there in September, I think. In um, June. Oh, you were there in June. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's a bit, di <coughs> bit different, a bit nicer. Like, so. <laughs> yeah. right. so did you find a question? <laughs> <laughs> well, I found, I asked myself, um, are there mistakes or does evil exist? Because I found out the last two weeks when I'm here being more relaxed and without stress um, that, that not, nothing really bad could happen. Right. I mean, the, fees, the pheasant disappeared, but it's, it's all in a way if we pers pers 
yeah, if we um, keep doing, then even some stressful things or hard things just yeah. You're saying there's no real, you're saying there's no real mistake. Mm -hmm. So that probably also means that there's nothing that's really right either. Oh right. And there there is just what is. Because you know, usually human beings are quite good at making judgments, you know. We see a situation and we we're judging it, you know. Is that good for me? Am I higher? Am I lower? All kind of sort of judgment stuff. You know? But when you see what you've seen, that there isn't really anything wrong and there isn't anything really right. Uh, of course, if you're a Catholic or you follow some religious ideas, moralities, then you might have already some idea about what is right and what is wrong. And then your judgments go along with those kind of uh, aspects of the religion, yeah? But this is very false, of course. It's very false. So what is not false is to be much more natural and to trust what comes from your own being, yeah? From your own center, yeah? When you can trust that, then as you say, there's nothing is wrong and nothing is right. It's just as it is. And somebody else might make some issues with your position. So what? Lovely. Everybody doing their own unfolding, you can say, their own destiny unfolding. So we don't have to agree with each other, but we can have a kind of um, tolerance, a kind of uh, an allowance for everybody to express as they want. Yeah? And if, if you carry on taking what you've seen about there's no really mistake, you will find this leads you into much more freedom. That basically whatever is coming from inside you is right. And you can just follow that. And then you might meet some people who say, no, 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 you know, that's wrong. You know, you have to do it this way. This is the game of human beings playing together. Yeah, yeah very joyful. <laughs> yeah, not always joyful. It can be not joyful. It's also okay. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So you'll have a nice time in Spain, I think, and I'll come and visit you in two or three weeks. <laughs> you take your um, your um, beautiful flute, yeah? Are you enjoying playing the flute? Yeah, but I really enjoy to do it like with other people. Right, right, yeah. Well, while you're down there, we'll be doing a concert for this celebration. There'll be a concert, so you get to <laughs> play in the concert. Very spontaneous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Good. Okay. Thank you. I don't have a question really, <laughs> but I decided to come okay. still to sit here. So maybe a question will arise, I hope. Well, I mean, as I, I haven't seen you now for a week or so, but before I left to go to Spain, so it must have been two weeks ago, you made a decision to stay here for a month and you actually are interested to come and live here. Is that still, are you still interested? I'm still interested, but I'm not gonna lie. I had my doubts to really stay, doubt. and I still have not really doubts. There's just no answer inside me if I should stay or should not stay. Right. right. So there's just this emptiness, this silence. Sure. There's no answer. Well, that's that's very good. I mean, this is exactly why we ask people to stay for a month, 
so you can figure out in some process of your own whether this is really what you want to live here. And we can also do the same. So what we've discovered is that usually by itself, it becomes clear, you know. So by being here a whole month, you've been here, what, two weeks now? Mm. So when you've been another two weeks, uh, you'll probably find it becomes very clear that you want to or you don't want to. And for us, it's okay. Uh, I mean, is there anything I can help you with? What do you find the most difficult thing here? I think it's just time. It all needs time. Time. Yeah, just to open up more. But I feel like I've opened up already much more. I'm laughing much more. I feel right. Like, um, I mean, you know, now we're having this talk and we couldn't really talk before. Yeah. You didn't really say very much. You were kind of spiritually quiet. Yeah? <laughs> I mean, one of the things I would say that maybe you could look at a bit is that, you know, of course, being quiet, being with yourself, and these things are not talking too much. They're all kind of good things. But it's also all right sometimes to talk a lot and to connect a lot and all kind of other ways to be. Everything is allowed. You know? I mean, I've been involved now for, unfortunately, I've been involved already for 50 years in this stuff. And you know, I've met people who talk a lot. I've met people who never talk at all, blah, 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 and blah, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, I've met very good masters who talk a lot, and I've met very good masters who don't talk anything. So there isn't a way to be, is what I'm trying to say. You know? We have a character, and we can't and don't need to throw away this character. We are not the character. We are something else. Mm -hmm. But the character is, is a necessary um, kind of tool in order to live with other people and to together do make a life together and whether it's going to be you know one woman in a relationship where you you know stay together and then maybe have children traditional sort of family style or whether it's in a community with 20 people um, sharing certain uh, concepts and ideas you know which work for you and so on whatever it might be then it's also necessary to connect and to talk and to laugh and to be silly and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Everything is all right. So, you know, sometimes with the spiritual, the, there is a sense with spiritual that, you know, you have to be very holy. You know? Mm, yeah. Maybe we don't need to be so holy. You see? Yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this particularly for you because two weeks ago you were a bit holy. And now I'm In what saying, sense? You were, two weeks ago when I met you, you were, well, three weeks ago, you were a bit holy. But now I find you much less holy. Yeah. Is that right? Maybe it's from the ashram, a lot of conditionings. <laughs> what? Yeah, from the ashram I've been. From, this. from other actually. Yeah, they've been all very holy and it's very hot up here. <laughs> it's much cooler down there than here. You can take your sweater yeah, off if yeah. you like. I'm sweating like here. Yeah, you, can, you can take everything off if you <laughs> oh. You see, this is taking that off is really nice because it shows you don't have to be so holy. Yeah, I can also. <laughs> I mean, you have to be very careful because in this community, well, I mean, apparently we do have a few rules, but I don't know exactly. The only rule I know is that you have to go to meditation every day. <laughs> but other than That's that, I don't think we have many rules, you know. But a lot of places, a lot of ashrams and um, yoga places, they have many, many 
fix and rules about how you need yeah, to, what you how, need to how do. To present yourself. You know, yeah. like you get your food, and then you have to count to thirty before you eat anything, and then you have to count another thirty before you eat another spoon. You know, and all this kind of stuff. You know? mm. All bullshit. It's all bullshit. You see, there's no way to be. Your the way you are is the right way. You know. I've always enjoyed being John David since. Well, I haven't always enjoyed, but for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> I remember very clearly there was a moment. I've had a few special moments in my life. So one moment was when I was in my twenties, okay, and I had a very good job, but it was in London, and I had to take the the metro, you know. Between my job mm -hmm. and where I lived, I had to go on the metro. Yeah. Later, I I used to go on my bicycle. I had a bicycle, but anyway, so I was on this metro. And one night, I was in the station, yeah, and um, suddenly, from I don't know where, yeah, it was very clear in that moment. I don't want to carry on living like this, even though I had a good job. Good mm. prospects. I was about twenty-seven when I when that happened, and I had good prospects in this company. I, I had a you know everything could have been great, but I just suddenly there was this from somewhere inside me. I just saw I don't want to do this kind of the city society in the train kind of life. You know, just finished. That was one moment. Yeah. And then I had another moment after I'd been with uh, Papaji about two years. One day, I realised that I'm just going to do John David. I don't care a shit about other people. I don't care a shit what judgments people make about me. For example, Nora's come tonight, but she doesn't like me very much. I'm a bit surprised she's here. But if she doesn't want to like me, it's okay for me. I don't mm. care. I'm not going to change for her, for mm. example. You know? And this was a very beautiful moment because I suddenly realized that actually as a human being, I'm allowed just to be me. That's one part of the whole story. So my character, John David's character, you know, English, uh, now very old, a bit grey and a bit fatty and all kind of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter, you know. It's just the way I am and I'm never going to change it. Mm -hmm. And it was like this Eureka moment. You see, it would have been about uh, 30 years ago now when I had that moment. So since about 30 years, I've lived my life as I want to live it. I think I have some capacity to consider other people, but you know, if I want to buy something, for example, I, I really like this glass. There's a big story about this glass because probably 15 years ago we needed new glasses in the community. And I found this glass, which I really like, it's very strong, and so I, we, we ordered you know, 100 of these or something. <laughs> Unfortunately, what I didn't know was that when you put one similar glass into the other glass, right, they're so much the same, they smash. The top glass smashed the bottom glass. So, of course, I didn't know that when I chose them, but it turned out that they weren't very practical mm. because they're so much the same shape. You put them in a, in a hot steam, and then you put them together and there's a slight um, expansion or contraction of the glass mm -hmm. and it's smashed. But I still like these glasses. So I'm very happy that I got one of those glasses tonight because now we've bought all kinds of other funny glasses. You see? Yeah, I mean... Um... I feel like there is a lot of facets to to my being. A lot and of what? Like, yeah, facets. Facets. facets, facets yeah, no? Right. Sure. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if I can just, like you said, be myself, and that includes like a lot of 
different parts of me that I, one day I'm like that, another day I'm different. And I don't know if that will be. Yeah. It's okay. For the other people. For the other people. Uh, yeah. No, don't care a shit about them. Yeah, and that's my you, problem. That's I'll tell my you a problem. big secret, this big spiritual secret. There aren't any other people. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I think I, there's I, a lot of people here, but that's all bullshit, really. Mm. Don't care about the other people, yeah. they're only it. an illusion. Ramana Mahesh, you've said it's all an illusion. Mm. It's all an illusion. Yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot of dimensions within me and I'm not allowing myself to express them freely. Yeah, so start to allow. I mean, th this community, I would say, is a very good place for allowing yourself to be yourself. Yeah, I've always been met with judgment from the outside, so it's very hard for me to open up, I guess. Yeah, but you've got two or three more weeks, and if you decide to live here, then you've got a few years. And in that time, your mo main uh, attainment will be to live you. Your essence, we know your essence is the same as everybody else's essence, yeah? So spiritually, your essence is the essence, and we all have the same essence. But then there's a character. Look at look around at these people, you know. I mean, nobody's the same, actually. They're all looking different. They all act different. And that's what makes it very nice, you know. It's very nice. It would be really boring if we're all the same. Mm. Can you imagine how boring that would be? And who would we all be like? Are we all going to be like um, Lat Latif? Latif. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be Shiva. We had to give up on that. But anyway. <sighs> and you'll find that when you can allow yourself to be who you are, when you can really allow that, you'll have much more fun. You'll have much more fun. Much more fun. <laughs> what are you feeling now? Uh, laughter. I, uh, it was You're very laughing. funny. It was very um, uh, unpredictable. Uh, like Latif, that was that took me out. <laughs> You don't have to be like him, you can be like yeah. you, you see. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it seems to me we've got onto we've got onto a good subject because now you're opening up pretty quickly right now sitting here. Is that right? Yes, that's right. You feel kind of allowed, yeah? You know, I tell you a secret, this community is very popular with young children. I, we've had many kids coming here with their parents, or usually they come with their mother, and the mother is not very interested. But the kids have told me, when I'm 18, uh, John David, I'm going to come and live here. Even if my mother's not interested, I'm interested. I'm going to come and live here. <laughs> Tough on kids, because there's not much freedom for mm. kids. They have to follow always what mummy wants. And then changing that from what mummy wants to what you want is also not so easy. Because we tend to end up with mummy sitting here and daddy sitting here, and we just continue the same stuff that we had when we were little kids. So you're in a great moment. You're around 22? 23. 23. Almost very 24. Old. <laughs> no, I'm 24. Wow, very old, yeah. Okay, so... You know, and you come to this funny community, and, and one of the points is to be as you are. Be as you are. You know, this is very beautiful teaching from Ramana, be as you are, not be as somebody else is. You see, be as you are. So this is, I think, a little confronting for you, but that will be very good. 
And now you can walk around and see if you can find any rules we have, because I don't think we have many <coughs> rules. Maybe you find a few rules, but probably not. I didn't see People any. think they have some rules, maybe. They probably think they have rules, but we don't really have rules. Great, huh? Yeah? Isn't that what we all want? I mean, isn't that the whole point of spiritual life, that we want to be free? We want to be free to be, and we want to be free to be the character which we are naturally the character. Good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you want to come, Nora? Come on, come on. You can't come here and then not... We haven't seen you for three years or something, and then you come here and you don't want even to talk. Come on, come on. <laughs> come and tell us your tragic story. Yeah? Are you a nurse now? No? You didn't do that in the end. You did it? What? It's a study. Why don't we talk here? It'd be much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I have a lot of questions for you, actually. So, like, why did you come tonight? I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, really. Come and tell me why you came tonight. Do you know? You don't know. Come and find out. So you're doing a training to become a midwife, yeah? Yeah. And do you like it? <clears throat> well, you obviously don't like it. Otherwise, <laughs> if you liked it, you wouldn't be like, you wouldn't react like this. So you obviously don't really like it. Yeah? Mm. I, tell I, mean... you a, I tell you a secret, you know. Mm. My sister. I know she was the she lead. Was the leader of midwife. All the midwives. I know. So I know, I know all about midwives. You know? mm -hmm. But I think you're, it's not your thing, yeah? I don't know what my thing is. I know you don't know. But that, it there. seems that's not. How, how many? How many? You've done six months training now. No. Okay? One month. One month. Mm. One and a half. <laughs> but we last saw you in, in January, yeah? So or February. February, maybe. So then February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So that's nine months. Actually, that's just right, yeah? Then they start coming yeah. out, and then, you can, <laughs> and then you can do your job, and they can show you what to do, and they start coming out. It takes nine months, so... <laughs> so uh, I'm really interested why would you come tonight after nine months because you didn't even like me when you were coming here well you didn't come here very much but you know I would have to think about it I don't know but you must know why you came tonight surely no you don't know no there was just a calling, a feeling, I don't know how to describe it, but I wanted to come. Okay, after nine months. And this training you've been doing for one month has not really got you? Yes, I mean, I think when we talk about having a job as a human, I think this is one of the most beautiful jobs because you are in full service of life. 
because you can just be a witness of this phenomena life, which humans can't control. It's just life appearing and disappearing. And it's very beautiful, actually. But yeah, these three and a half years studying a lot of input, 90% not needed, getting stressed again because I'm studying too much, too detailed, wanting to know and be the be good again. So I could really observe that my childhood is catching me again because I always wanted to be, or my mother wanted me to be safe and good here in Germany and be a very good student. And... For example, when I, we were talking together, did mm. that touch you, what I was saying to him? Yeah. I was inviting him to be himself, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what you just said about, you know, I've been living my life in Germany trying to be what my mother would like me to be, right? Can you see why that's not really a good plan? I can see that, and I can even feel that, but what you said, it was like, there's this inner voice, and then there's people, the, the outside, which wants to rule you. But with me, it's like I have this two inner voices, and this other one is always stronger or very strong of pulling me back into security or whatever, what I know is... I just don't have this trust. Because I think, who, see, who am I then after that? When I'm, yeah, I don't you, know. You were just telling me a couple of seconds ago how you can trust delivering babies because yeah. this is the natural flow of life. Yes. You know? So it's, it seems like you're not very clear about this. You know? Yeah, but there are three and a half years of getting judged again by grades. At the end, every one of be, us... You won't be judged by Greystone. You'll be judged by these teachers and uh, oh. lecturers and uh, whatever. Grades. Grades, that's what I'm Judged by grades. Like... Grades, not grades, grades. What? Judged by, what? by marks. Oh, by yeah. grades, grades. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's all bullshit. It is. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Christ! <laughs> And I already realized you know, One that. of my most successful things was this girl, right? She's studying for about 25 years to be Medicine. a doctor. Mm -hmm. She has exams every three weeks. And she came here because she got so touched and because she's got a, an intelligent mother who came to check us out and decided it's okay for her to come here. So now she's here. And at least for one year, she's now released from all this nonsense that goes on. You know? The reality with babies, excuse me, is that when they're ready, they pop out, you know. They almost don't need a midwife. I know. They almost don't yeah. need it. You know, in it's the just, Indian, I know. the woman is in the fields picking up rice and the baby pops out and she... Yeah. Uh, you know, puts it under her arm and, you know, I don't know, carries on with the rice. <laughs> true that. Yeah. You know? It's true. And if, if you do it in Germany, it's like this enormous checklist System. of all the yeah. things you have to check, you know? Yeah. The water temperature's got to be exactly blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And, yeah. And this makes it a nightmare because it ends up just being one more mental stuff. I know. Why don't you give yourself back to you? Drop all this nonsense. Just give it to yourself. When you told us you were going off to do this training, I just thought it was the most stupid idea I've heard. Honestly. Because you had finally got enough courage up to deal with me in a way that was acceptable to you. And you were very much interested with the community and the people. You had several friends. Everybody liked you. Even I liked you, even though you were difficult. I liked you, actually. I like you, too. Actually. Okay, good. It's not that I don't like you. Yeah. 
Is there any way you have to start becoming clear for yourself? You're now in your 40s, I think, aren't you? Yeah, 42. 42. So in, when you're going to finish this training, you'll be 45. Mm -hmm. I don't think I will finish it. No, I don't think you're going to finish it. It's too exhausting. It. Yeah, the reason you come but. here tonight is to hear me telling you to quit. And we're looking for three more people, so it's perfect. We got one. one is on the on the screen over there. One is there, and one is there. Him and you and who? You know, like, see, easy. You are completely ready to come and live in the community, or at least come and be involved in the community. You don't have to decide to live here. You can start off taking steps, you know, being volunteers and coming to the Sangha weekends every three months and so on and so on. But you just quit. Just when you got going, you quit. I'm running. Hmm? Yeah, I'm running away. You know, I was a but very... You always run away. I know. You've and I was a... running away because uh, you, you're always trying to be the good girl to do what mummy, you, what you think mummy would like you to, you know, to do. But that doesn't work. You can't live your life with somebody else. I understand that, but I can't explain. You don't have to explain. Yeah, I can't. You don't have even. to explain to anybody. You just start doing your life in a way that serves you. Makes you happy, makes you peaceful, encourages you to be just simply with love, of an open heart, in presence. These are the things that you were attracted to when you got involved. But you didn't get involved for long enough because you've been going to all kinds of stupid teachers for years that didn't teach you anything, bullshit, spiritual bullshit. So you were completely full, filled up with all kinds of funny things about everything. You didn't really understand what's going on. And this thing about your sexual choice, I'm sure this has also been a very big thing for you. But it doesn't need to be, you see. Yeah. In this community we have boys, we have girls, we have trans, we have dog, we don't have a dog, but we have a... <laughs> <laughs> parrot, we have a parrot. A parrot. So, you have any question about your future? Yeah, the only question is really how I can have this courage, which is missing, or this trust in life, in this loving intelligence. I understand that on a certain level, but then there's always this big distrust. But is the distrust your distrust, or is this you trying to feel what mummy would think about it? Or somebody else would think about it, or your friend would think about it, or your lover would think about it. You have to, you have to be ready to stand up and do your life, you know? Some people will like it, and some people won't like it. When you didn't like me before, I, I didn't really care, you know. I, I tried to accommodate you. We worked something out, you know, for the next retreat. But basically, um, I don't care a shit if people like me or they don't like me. Yeah, but I have the feeling it's just going on within me. It's, it has nothing to do yeah, with any... Have, I don't also give a shit on anyone. Yeah, but you but, have to understand that you've been filled up by thousands and thousands of little rules, little to-dos, what you have to do. You have to do this and you have to do mm. that. You have to think this. You have to wash behind your ears and brush your teeth and all these things kids are told endlessly. You know, I have two little girls in my life now. I don't care a shit if they brush their teeth or not. Mm. You know, but because mummy wants them to brush their teeth, we've got electric toothbrushes and they every night, you know, they're brushing their teeth. A 
I'm very proud of the fact that in my mouth I haven't got one natural tooth. <laughs> this is a very big achievement because it means that now from 80 until 102, I'm going to live at least until 102, I discovered yesterday. So for the next 20 years, I don't have ever to go to a dentist. Can you imagine? You see? I don't even have to brush them. Fantastic. I strongly recommend. All plastic with... <laughs> so I went to this dentist, right? I went to this dentist because I had been told that one of my tooth was a bit loose and could break at any moment. So when we got talking in this dentist, he's, he's I think he's uh, about to retire. He's a very lovely guy, about to retire. We got talking to him. Yeah? He was actually uh, Indira's dentist from 25 years ago. She introduced me because I'm so difficult with dentists. you know. Mm -hmm. and, and anyway, we got along very well. And then one day I said, you know, how would it be if you just take all my teeth out and put new plastic ones in? And then I will never have to go to a dentist again for the rest of my life. What do you think about that? He said, fine, fine, we do it, we do it. So I had to go very often, you know. I had to take them out and then put them in and get it made and blah, blah, blah. Big hassle. But now I know that I'd, for the rest of my life, probably I won't need to go again. I mean, not many people are going to choose what I chose, but that's what I chose, because that, to me that makes a lot of sense. And I don't care if other people think that's just stupid what I did. There'll be people, na nature lovers sitting here who's a oh, you know, spiritual teacher and he hasn't got any teeth. That's not really, <laughs> not very natural. You know, I, I never go to his meeting again because he hasn't got any natural teeth. You know? I don't care, you know. Okay, fine, don't come. Don't come. Mm. Yeah, you're right. There's this thought within me that I finally, because I was studying in something completely different, you know, I was working for 15 years in economics and now I something came to me which fits more my being, personality, whatever, but I already have doubts and but I think you can't give up now it's not how can you again yeah you know, of course you can give up if you want to give up you can give up you know you can do anything you like yeah and yeah You've but got so many ideas darling about how you have to be for all the other people particularly maybe mommy or no mommy doesn't care she has no chance to care because I don't want to hear anything okay very good yeah it's not so good so you course. have to decide what you want you know you're 40 going to be 45 when the training's over so it would be a bit sad if you do the training kind of against your good feelings about it and then it becomes just another job and all this delight that you were saying about this is the, the nature of life uh, delivering babies you know it's all very wonderful well it can be but it can also not be mm -hmm. Not in the system. Probably Definitely not. not. The, probably not in the system, no. Have you got the strength to make your own system? Because you can also do that. You know, they have babies born in water now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you are still within the system. Yeah. You have to be do your work within this system. Sure, sure. You can go your own way. But you can see, but... I'm sure you can see on some level how ridiculous it is. I mean, in one way it's very necessary in society that everybody's trained and they've got a certificate on the wall mm. and that protects everybody from everybody and blah, blah, blah. Yeah? But when you think about an Indian woman in the rice field and she's nine months pregnant and then the baby just pops out, you know? Sorry, but this gives some sense about all these rules and rules and rules. And in Germany, they just love all this stuff. You know? And does the baby really care if the temperature is 42 or 46 or 37? Of course not. No, and sometimes the soul decides, or maybe was confused with, this, with the wrong body and realizes, oh, 
I got the wrong way, goes back to the source and says, ah, I had to go left and not right. So this is when life disappears out of nowhere and doctors cannot explain why with their numbers. It's mm -hmm. just, it disappears again. And that's a beautiful fact about this job, but yeah, all these rules and yeah, it's just... Yeah, but you see, you're really... old enough to see the effect of all that. Because basically what you've chosen, as you say, is a very nice thing to do, delivering babies and looking after the mother and so mm -hmm. on. So this is kind of quite a beautiful thing. Not every one of them is very beautiful. I remember in the case of my babies, you know, the, I remember one night the midwife came and got a bucket, you know, filled it up with warm water and then took one baby and put him in the bucket, her in the bucket, you know, blop. She's sitting in the bucket, kind of, do I really like this, you know? Mm. I can see it's not easy for you because you wanted to change from economy and all this stuff, and you chose something quite nice. But when you told, when I heard about it, you know, I immediately felt it's not really in the flow of your life. And I, I don't, I'm not suggesting that in the flow of your life would have been to come and live in the community. But at that time, it would have been much more natural if you had got involved to live here, actually. So, I mean, whatever is going to, whatever the result of this situation is going to be, I think you need to decide soon. You know? And whatever you decide, you're going to have to trust your own decision. Yeah, and this inner navigation is just completely missing. I don't have this, what you talk about, and this, there's an inner feeling and you know it's right. I always have right and wrong. I always have this judge and this judge, and they are really equal. Yeah. Maybe this other one is even stronger because I'm so conditioned. I understand all this, but I don't know how to free myself from this. Well, as because you know, it, that's can't... exactly the work we're doing in this community, is to free ourselves from this old condition stuff. But it's very difficult and it's not so easy. Yeah, I know. And, you know, back, back in February, March, uh, whenever it was, February, I guess, you made a decision, very strong decision, to, to stop being involved here. But what you were saying to yourself, if you didn't realize, you weren't really saying no to John David, because by that time you a bit liked me, actually, and we were getting along okay. You were saying, somehow you were saying no to something very fundamental inside you. Right? And then you were choosing something that would be socially acceptable and and your close friends and mother would find it a really good thing. You would also find it a nice thing, as you said, you know, bringing the nature. But if it's not, if it's not now after one month, if it's not kind of, um, what's the word, if it doesn't fill you up, you know, it can't be the right thing. There's always both. It fills me up, but on the other hand, I don't want it. It's exhausting, tiring, but there is one part, there's always these two parts, always these two sides. There's no, not one time there's moments when there's really clarity. But now I'm already again so filled up in my head. Today was the only day, because I was already so connected, I also even watched yesterday the, the last satsang you had, and I felt a lot of connection. I knew I wanted to come here. And today was the first day after one and a half month I was just sitting, kind of meditating with music, but just relaxing. And I didn't have that. Because I'm just studying like crazy un until late in the night and not sleeping. And <laughs> yeah, because it's a lot of stuff. It's medicine. We have to study really. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. And they're going to test <laughs> They're going to test you and they're going to give yeah, you yeah. grades and all that. You know, I, honestly, I think you don't need it in your life. I'm sorry. 
It's not for me to decide, but I'm bloody glad that I'm not doing that anymore. Mm. You know this guy, Elon Musk? Yes. Yeah. So I don't like him so much anymore, but he, he's got some children, quite a few children, who are in their late teens or maybe early 20s, yeah, from his earlier relationships. And these are all so clever kids, you know. And he was asked, you know, is it important to get a university degree to study, you know, like, no, he said no. He didn't. Yeah. Maybe it's still very strongly in me that my mother wanted this, yeah. but... Well, it probably is very I'm... strong. And somehow for you to get an answer, which is not going to come maybe so quickly right now, but for you to work out your own answer to this situation, you've got to see how the conditioning works. That I can see. Yeah, but you've got to really feel it on a deep level that you're because you're really caught up in all that. I'm you're caught up in that. I'm not yeah. caught up anymore. I release myself out of that, you know. I'm caught up in that. Yeah. And I'm tired of it. <laughs> yeah, but are you tired enough of it? No, obviously not. Because I had I have such a big capacity of taking shit. Because I had to learn that. So I yeah, I have the feeling that my capacity of eating shit or or having being in pain or suffering is very enormously big. Well, I mean, that's not a nice thing to have. Yeah? No, it's also not an. It's not a cool thing to be proud of. Definitely not. But this is how I can explain that to myself. That I'm. I mean, it's time since longer. I mean, I was already on the ground again, or what? I mean, I don't need to go through it again, and I don't want to. Definitely not. But something. But, you know, what you said just before was actually a bit touching because you said that, I don't know, it was today or yesterday, you watched a film of satsang. Yeah? The last satsang from, the, from September or, I don't know, the last satsang I saw, yeah, the yeah. recording of this. Yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't matter which one yeah. it was. But anyway, you watched that meeting. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then you, today you were being quiet and then you decided to come here. So... You know, without me asking you to tell me why you came here, that's the answer to why you came here. Because on some deeper level inside you, it brought you here. There's something here for you. Nothing about me or the community, but there's some aspect that actually is for you. You have to find out what it is and whether you can get that doing what you're doing. And the answer, I'm sorry to say, is probably no. Yeah, here we are again. Yeah. yeah but you came here to get me to tell you these things. You know? Yeah. Somehow. Are you busy this weekend? You have a lot of studies to do, probably. <laughs> yeah, studies. But I'm, you know, I'm sitting at my desk also today. I'm just, I'm already at the limit again. I don't want it. It, it can't. I'm filled up. Okay, but you don't have to. You can say no. I yeah, but then I, I can't take the exams. I can't. It's don't. not possible. Just stop. <laughs> just stop. And if you really, really are so into doing this uh, baby thing, mm. you look around in the world, in the whole world, yeah, for yeah. a group of people who don't need a certificate and don't need exams, who will take you as a sensitive human being, who wants to work with them in their special up, down, side down, in the swimming pool <laughs> kind of delivery or something, you know. So you go and find these kind of people, you know, sincere people who you'd like to be involved with.
nice to see you again. Good luck. What can I say to you? you know? If I could give you a good answer, I would give you, but there isn't really an answer. Mm. The answer is, is your answer. And you have to see if you can give yourself the space that your answer can be whatever the answer is for you. It's all right to continue, it's all right to stop, you know, everything is all right. And you know, in a very short time, you're 40, what do we say, 42? So in another 42 years, you'll be 84. And even with the modern medicine, you'll be almost finished. You may have already been finished by then. I don't know. You see? So is it really worth being not in yourself doing something that gives you joy every day? Is it, is it really sensible? You've only got 40 years left, which you've already lived. There was a moment, you know, I was telling a few of my special moments. So when I had quit my job and gone back to college to be an architect, yeah, I thought that would be the solution. It, it turned out it wasn't. But anyway, I thought it was. And one day I remember walking out of the college, walking down the street in the afternoon. I was so happy. I was so free that I vomited. <laughs> and this vomit was so lovely because I felt, wow, great, you know. Now I'm going to be free and I'm going to do a job which I really like and it'll all be wonderful. You see, so in that moment I was vomiting. Mm. Later, I, it turned out that wasn't my destiny and wasn't the thing I really wanted to do. And now I'm sitting here doing exactly what I enjoy. And I didn't study anything for this. There's no, there was no exams. Nobody examined me, except maybe you. People like you. <laughs> so now I'm in overtime, you know, it's 25 past 10. I should have finished at half past nine. Then I thought 10 o'clock, now, now 10.30. So I'm doing a lot of overtime. So we just decide, if you want to spend the weekend here, I'm having a weekend with the residents. We'd be happy to have your help in the kitchen if you want to stay. As you like. And if it isn't this weekend, you can consider coming here again to give yourself a kind of space, you know? You need a kind of space. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Now you'll like me a bit more, yeah? <laughs> you can even give me a hug or something, right? <laughs> oh, you like me before? Oh, well, that, maybe you like me too much. Huh? <laughs> but as you, as you prefer girls, that was probably a bit difficult. <laughs> wow. Well, we had quite an interesting evening, yeah? Wow. Okay, have fun. <laughs>